India's Income Inequality As per the World Inequality Database report of 2021, India belongs in the category of extreme inequalities countries. The report says, India stands out as a poor and very unequal country with an affluent elite. To give you an idea of the extent of the inequality, let's look at a few numbers. The top 1% holds 22% of the total national income. The top 10% holds 57% of the total national income. And the bottom 50% holds 13% of the national income. Yes, just a meager 13%. Now in this video, we are going to take a look at the possible reasons behind this extreme inequality and what can be done about it. Essentially, income inequality is the measure of how unevenly income is distributed throughout a population. The less equal the distribution, the higher income inequality is. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, let's complicate it a little bit with some mathematics. In 1905, Max Lorenz developed the Lorenz curve for representing inequality of the wealth distribution. As you can see here, the straight line at a 45 degree angle represents a perfectly equal income distribution, while the curved line shows the actual distribution of income. Higher the curvature, greater is the income inequality. This Lorenz curve is used to measure the Gini coefficient. Lower the Gini coefficient of a country, lower is the income inequality within that population. As per the latest reports from 2011, the Gini coefficient of India stands at 35.7. Slovenia has the lowest Gini coefficient at 24.6, whereas South Africa has the highest with a whopping 63. What's the current status of India's income inequality? In India, the State of Inequality in India report is released by the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister. The key highlights of the 2022 report were number 1. The labour force participation rate for women is at an abysmal 30%. Number 2. The unemployment rate is at 4.8%. But what's alarming about it is that the unemployment rate increases with the level of education. Which means we are unable to create jobs that correspond to a higher level of education. Number three, additionally, expenditure on health is also a cause of the descent into poverty. Now, let's look at these issues separately. First, India's underused labor market and skewed income profile. According to a 2021 World Bank report, overall labor force participation rate for India is as low as 46.3%. One of the major reasons for this is the low participation rate of female workers. Income profiles have shown a vast pay gap between men and women, further reducing their participation. Lack of secure jobs, increasing informalization, gender-based profiling, or restriction in moving from one job profile to another due to lack of basic opportunities often lead to restriction in upward socioeconomic mobility. While economic growth has taken place in terms of an increase in wages, the benefits of that growth, sadly, have been concentrated within certain strata of the society, leading to further increase in income gap. Basic needs become luxuries, thus impacting the country's entire social fabric. Secondly, indirect tax. The indirect taxes like sales tax, VAT and excise taxes consist of almost 50% of the government's fiscal resources. Now, what are these indirect taxes? These are taxes that are usually shifted to the consumer from the manufacturer. However, such taxes have created more inequality over the years because these are levied irrespective of the consumer's economic background. Hence, when the government raises indirect tax rates, it obviously ends up affecting consumers from the lower socio-economic strata more. For example, India has one of the highest taxation rates on fuel since it is heavily taxed by both central government 
as well as state government. Third is inflation. In contrast to indirect taxes, there has been a substantial reduction in corporate and manufacturing taxation rates. The government also withdrew the enhanced surcharge on long and short term capital gains for domestic and foreign portfolio investors. So, while on one hand, manufacturing prices are indeed decreasing, however, that cost is now shifted to the consumer, leading to increase in price of goods and services. A direct outcome of the government's fiscal policy to boost the supply side at the expense of demand is the rising inflation. In the past seven years, while the prices of essential food items has increased by 50%, real wage rate has risen just by 22%. The current inflation rate stands at 6.71%. Ironically, a major chunk of the earnings by corporates is lost through tax evasion. Through a complex and loosely regulated tax system, MNCs and rich individuals actively seek to increase their profits by storing money offshore in tax haven countries. Countries like the British Virgin Islands, Cayman Islands, Bermuda, etc. This allows a massive amount of wealth to flow untaxed and in secret out of reach from tax authorities. Wealth that could have been utilized by the government to provide vital infrastructure and resources. As per the reports of the Tax Justice Network, an independent research network, India is losing almost 70,000 crore annually due to private tax evasion. To give you a perspective about how much 70,000 crore means, the entire budget allocated to the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs in the 2021-22 budget is about 56 crore. Now, what can we do? about this growing income gap. First, raising the minimum wage. As per the State of Inequality report, earning 25,000 rupees in a month would put you in India's top 10 of the country's wage earners. Yes, just 25,000. India is in a dire need of a complete restructuring of the entire labor wage structure. One key recommendation from the report was to raise minimum income and introduce universal basic income. Such a policy can reduce the income gap and ensure equal distribution of earnings in the labor market. Second, the report also recommends a higher percentage of the government's expenditure to be allocated towards social services and the social sector to make the most vulnerable population resilient to sudden shocks and stop the descent into poverty. Third, the report proposes introduction of job schemes that are demand-based and offer guaranteed employment in urban areas so that the surplus labor is rehabilitated. Fourth, the report also highlights the need for schemes and initiatives that are more responsive to gender inequalities. Fifth, control over monopolies and restrictive trade practices. Although monopoly and Restrictive Trade Practices Commission were formed to make necessary judgments on the adding enterprises, but existing procedure had failed to protect the interest of small enterprises as these measures were found rather inadequate and ineffective, subsequently increasing the inequality gap. However, everything said and done, at the end of the day, to bring a change that originates at the root, India needs equitable access to basic amenities like food and water, housing, education and a universal health care and fiscal policies that support the above. Do let us know your views and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.